Right, all right, all right. How's everyone doing today? Today is a very interesting topic because this is the first time I'm going to be speaking on work-life balance uh, to you all. But the way we are designing this is uh, through Q&A. So the question of work-life balance is one that looms over our head. So my dad used to tell me a story of a, of a king who used to, uh, you know, really enjoy life. He made merry, he used to eat everything he liked, he traveled, he had money. And what used to happen was there was a sword that was hanging above his head, which he never noticed. And then one day, his court advisor went and told him and said, uh, you know, jahan pana, upar dekhiye, talwar hai, aapke sar par mandra hai. And then uh, no one apparently could reach and get that sword down because it was very high, you know, the old castles used to have really high ceilings. And somehow, after that sword was noticed, the king was never able to relax and have fun again. So work, for all of us, is like that sword, constantly looming over our heads, constantly giving us a uh, reason to lose sleep, a reason to uh, ignore sometimes important things like exercise, sometimes even ignore the development of anything else other than your work. So that work uh, sort of goes on to define you. Some people say, my work is my worship, my wor work is my passion, my work defines me, my work gives me my identity, gives me a reason to live. All that is fine, that's fair, there is nothing wrong with that if that works for you. But uh, there's something I wrote, uh, work, work is a part of your life. Aapki zindagi ka hissa hai. But your life has to be apart from your work. Apart, like two people are apart from each other. A-P-A-R-T. So this is just something I came up with. So your entire life is a journey that you need to undertake. And sometimes that journey will take you off road. And when you go off road, you have lost the path, your path, whatever it is. So work and life, these are two intersecting concepts in our life that uh, very often confuse us, very often uh, also scare us, like that sword over the king's head. Once he noticed it, he could never relax again. It's as if we are groomed from our very early years that, um, you know, first we have to clear our school exams, then we clear our college exams, then competitive exams, you know, IAS, IFS, IPS, MBA, IIT, IIM, lots of I's. Isn't it? Because the concern here is that we're a poor country, guys. We, we, we really are. We're an extremely poor country and there's no hiding in our India great hai sabse aage bhagega, Hindustan hamara. Ye sab bolna bahut khubsurat hai. But when you go to Europe or you go to places like Singapore, you realize that yaar, Pani mein hai kaafi hum log. Economy pani mein hai, infrastructure pani mein hai, government to terna seek chuki hai, pani mein hai ki nahi hai. So the problem is that because we are a poor nation uh, and because we have such, uh, you know, a crumbling infrastructure and so much corruption, people see work as an escape from poverty. And this is not, you may say, aray, mere family ke paas baut paisa hai. But I always joke about this. I say most families, most Indian families will have a story that sounds similar. Dada ji gaon mein rehte the, dadi ji gaon se aaye the, paanch rupay leke. Something similar, some variety of this story. And they came to the big city and then they built their wealth. So we owe them for helping us escape poverty, for helping us escape uh, a life where, you know, nothing, we couldn't have the good stuff, you know, achha paano, achha gaadi mein gumo. Ye sari cheezon ke liye mehnat lagti hai, isn't it? So, the Indian attitude or, uh, you know, the Indian mindset towards work is as if we work for self-respect only or we work to escape the uh, perils of a lifestyle that uh, we wouldn't uh, want to have for ourselves, isn't it? So work becomes uh, almost as if, if we, uh, almost like a float, as if you're sinking in the ocean and someone has a float. So you're like, I need to stay on top of the water, otherwise I'm going to sink and die. 
but very rarely do people think about it in this manner that your work is just a very small fraction of what you do yes you spend many hours in the day but there are so many other aspects to your life there's your family there are your friends there are your hobbies there are things you like to learn even if they make you no money so how do you create this balance between your work and your life also depends on the nature of your job for example if you are in emergency services uh, work life balance is something you must have forgotten about uh, given the fact that we are in the middle of a global pandemic the covid-19 corona virus pandemic uh, so that being said that being said we have to cater our expectations also on the basis of <coughs> what kind of profession we have chosen if you work for a sarkari bank if you work for a government institution you'll have nice long lunch breaks tea breaks then even between the lunch and tea break you have all these mini whatsapp breaks water cooler breaks meetings are also technically breaks so how much work do you really get done do you don't just have to get a physical break sometimes you have a psychological break that you take you just get distracted you're just looking outside the window you're just scrolling your instagram feed you're just scrolling your whatsapp groups ki kya charcha ho rahi hai kya charcha ho rahi and more so these days because a lot of us are uh, not able to meet our family and friends because of the whole social distancing thing so how do you create uh, a, a a very healthy uh, balance between what work needs to be done and the business of living your life so that's what i'm here to address and uh, definitely this is something i think that we can discuss uh, more so based on the kinds of questions you guys have about how to strike a good work life balance and i think uh, rupali if you could help uh, throw the floor open now we can definitely start entertaining questions i think because uh, i think this is one of those topics that really people would want to know about but i think each query would be more um, uh, very very specific so let's get specific there's no harm in that Uh, so whatever you want to ask me yes. about uh, you know nasty bosses yes, yes. nasty yes. timelines whatever you want to ask about bomb for do mere pe koi baat nahi i can take it okay yes. yeah uh, all participants are requested it is an interactive session so uh, this will be the question and answer if you have any question please use your chat box otherwise you can unmute yourself and you can ask directly to to the doctor amal yeah please ask uh, Yeah, 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 sorry to disturb you. Uh, no language barrier is over there. Is it okay? Yeah, you can use any language: Hindi, English, yes. Marathi, Hindi. Yes. 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 Thank, Thank you. you. Yeah, you can just ask me anything. I mean, something you're struggling with at work. Maybe you're overworked. Maybe you have a really uh, difficult boss you're dealing with. Maybe you have too many uh, deadlines. Maybe someone in your office is very lazy. You have to do all their work. Um, maybe you, your family is complaining that you don't give them time. um aman sir there is one question is bookish knowledge good interesting and uh, i really like this question i have not been asked uh, this All question right. before no, no, no. so i believe it's like saying is dosa good or is idli good it depends on what you're in a mood for or what you uh, feel like uh, engaging in now i would say practical knowledge has its own benefits i'm a huge proponent of the school of hard knocks um uh, I'm a huge proponent of practical knowledge gained in the real world. Uh, different people learn differently. Okay, now you see, for example, when I was in school, I was not very good at mathematics. Anything that required very logical and to memorize stuff, I can't even remember birthdays and names. Uh, I'm not good at it. But ask me to be creative. Like you, my all my talks, including the one I'm giving you right now, there is absolutely nothing I've prepared. I have just little just this is all I prepared that's it just a few notes I made but there is no preparation I speak my mind completely openly and I just have a understanding of the subject I have an understanding of how much time I have so I work best when I am uh, not given a structure to work within which is very rigid so for me uh, definitely practical knowledge is more important having said that having said that having said that i have also learned a lot through books so i do try to uh, have an appreciation for the fact that a good book uh, and a good book doesn't necessarily have to be very thick 
even a thin book, a really nice thin book. Like for example, if you read the book Who Moved My Cheese or you read the book Man's Search for Meaning. These are very thin books, you know, but they're so sublime. They can give you some of the greatest life lessons of your life. You don't have to necessarily read some kind of thick volume. It really depends on your patience because nowadays a lot of people would rather, you know, just wear their shorts and watch Netflix, Amazon, Prime, Disney, Hotstar at night. No one really reads at night anymore. I remember when I was a kid, my mother used to make reading compulsory at night, every night before sleeping, which is why it helped me uh, gain a reasonable degree of articulateness so I don't have to struggle so much to express myself today. So that, that, thankfully, because I did all that reading as a kid, um, able to you know put together ideas and convey them in a short and uh, hopefully interesting manner. So bookish knowledge or practical knowledge. I say both are fantastic, both are amazing. Uh, bookish knowledge depending on the kinds of books because see if you're trying to gain a very specific uh, expertise in a very specific area of knowledge. For example, if you're learning, trying to learn cooking, uh, bookish knowledge or practical knowledge? I would say a little bit of both because you need the recipes from the book or from a YouTube channel. Maybe you may want to, you may not want to con padega bed ke cookbook. Purane time mein hota tha. But you may also feel uh, like a, 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 a good a good book with exactly if you, especially if you're into pastry, where the proportions are so important. Uh, then you might need a book just to understand the fundamentals unless you have a teacher. So books are great. If you, for example, if you want to learn coding, uh, it's a, the best way to learn is, uh, again, you need the books to understand how things work, the exact, uh, the, because there's a certain precision in which you have to follow, uh, you know, the sequence of uh, characters, etc., for that code to work. So, you cannot choose between the two. Okay, so I hope that answers your question. Yes, sir, you have answered his question. Anyone have a, a other question, please ask. It is question and answer round. Uh, it will be like uh, solving your all doubts regarding work life and everything. So please ask. If you want, you can unmute yourself and you can ask directly to the doctor. Yeah, go ahead and ask. Hello. There is a question from David. Yes, uh, do you think I want to ask something? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Hello? Yes, okay, can I, can, I can see, I can hear you. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon, sir. Hi. Actually, hello. Sir, my name is Jyoti Sharma and I'm from Delhi. Okay. My question is how to convince the parents to pay the fees? Actually, uh, they are not so poor also. And uh, I am a teacher in a convent school, and the school is uh, located in rural area. But people are very rich. Uh, most of the parents are working in government offices, but yeah. still they are not ready to pay the. The amount is only 1650 for the month, uh, monthly. It is 1650, somewhat like that only. But still they are not ready to pay, and because of that, uh, we teachers are also suffering because where from where the uh, admin will uh, provide the fees. Uh, uh, sorry, salary. So I am actually uh, getting like uh, how how to convey the message to the parents that kindly pay the fees. I'm not getting that point. And principal is uh, asking us to send the message again and again to the parents. See, she don't want to be in between. Like, uh, no, I understand what you're saying. Now this is a very unfortunate situation to be in. Because basically you've gone from being a teacher to being one of those Vasuli people, you know, you're literally just collecting, trying to collect money, uh, yes, isn't it? Yes. So, Vasuli wali baat hogi. In the movie, mein nahi dikhate, wo gangster ja ke darwaze pe, he goes with three, four guys, hockey stick. Obviously, you can't be dramatic about it. But see, if somebody doesn't want to pay you their money, it is very difficult to convince them. Uh, and this is a practical yeah. problem. Now, if they're breaking any laws, Okay, if they're breaking any laws, then mm -hmm. the only sensible thing to do is you have to involve the law. You have to involve the authorities and say they're not paying. See, because how can you force someone to give you their money? You can't. It's just not doable. There are no... There are no... Mm -hmm. 
uh, but on the other side uh, you know they are very demanding like we are giving online classes and uh, late night also they uh, give them work uh, message and all everything they ask something if they have got queries during late night like 10 30 or if we are not responding to that for that also they send a complaint to the principal so that is so principal is taking care of I know, I but the thing is that they are becoming demanding day by day like uh, make your set of videos and send to the students to explain but this is not possible for us also we have also got a family life also apart from that school life and uh, without salary you know mind is getting disturbed also in this crisis i am paying 6100 for my son 6100 that is monthly tuition fee right. i also have to put that but why they are not taking so so please guys like, so that i can be a little bit uh, like positive see lad you need to understand one thing very very clearly no one owes you fairness in this world no one owes you niceness no. no one owes you fairness no one owes you money no one owes you love no one owes you time no one owes you friendship no, no one owes it to you if you want these things you have to go and Hello. get it can i be honest no. with you out here i know it sounds very harsh ki hume mujhe dilasa dene ke liye bola tha but i'm being very practical with you okay if you are no. working in an no. institution that abuses its teachers or where the teachers are not the where the parents are being abusive to the privacy of the teachers then maybe it is time yeah. to consider whether that institution is a place where you see your future because i believe something very important mm-hmm. is that you need to remember is anything that makes you lose your sleep lose your health lose your family relationships and lose your peace of mind mm-hmm. in the long run in the long run is not worth spending your time on is a very it's a very cut and dry mm-hmm. solution either you learn to tolerate the abuse and say okay this is yeah. how it is this is my institute is not going to support me parents are going to expect me to basically uh, deliver uh, over and above th- my duties but it is always mm-hmm. your prerogative to say no all right mm-hmm. if if <laughs> mahatma no. if mahatma gandhi had accepted the fact that the british are here they have more guns than us they have more ships than us let's just accept the fact that the brits are here Let's just hang around till they hang around. Then we wouldn't have had a freedom struggle, mm-hmm. isn't it? It always okay. takes one person to say, "I'm sorry, but I will not do this." Jo karna hai kariye. Yeah, and many, many a times I said this thing to the parents. You know, for every little little reason, they go to direct to the education office complaining about so and so teacher. Means uh, even principal is also fed up with his parents now, but she is also not having any other option how to tackle. See, you have to maybe maybe maybe, maybe organize a, a parent-teacher interaction where you all put your concerns on the table and say, guys, this is not uh, how we can we can't work sustainably in this manner. So please, uh, we need your support as well. There's a, you have to so you have to create a, an interface. If they start saying, "Arey, humne tumko paisa diya, tumne humko kya diya, tum log aise ho, karte nahi ho, hamara bacha pad nahi raha hai." Literally, Haryanvi language they speak to us. But see, वहाँ का culture, culture भी शायद culture भी एक चीज होती है ना. So you cannot blame someone yeah. because you see, if if you grow up in an aggressive surrounding, aggressive house, aggressive language, so you're going to become a little more aggressive by nature. So. either you learn to uh, learn to negotiate better see like if someone talks loudly to you and you they're not understanding then maybe you also have to say hey man you know are you know guys not understanding what i'm saying please take your kid out if you feel we are not meeting the expectations okay can't say can't say it word can't say to them like this take your child out the, uh, the principal, uh, the like a thousand children hardly uh, there were uh, 900 students last year who paid 100 students who did not pay the fees for last 2018 and 19 also 19 and 20 also so all businesses that uh, basically suffer with this problem it's not just the education industry a lot of in- yeah. businesses that don't manage to get their monies they completely go belly up over time those businesses mm. cease to exist so it's not a problem and that you will plan yeah. big big parties they are having plan they are having so it's very difficult to get the money from them yeah so 
Aman, sir, thank you. Move to the next one. Next question because there are so many questions held in line. So Devki ma'am was asking nowadays it's difficult to get when if we get a job there is no space to prove our expertise. So job satisfaction is not there. And how to manage this situation? There are several opportunities for you to advertise your services and advertise what you really are about uh, using free tools. A lot of people are not understanding uh, this, that you're just getting a job is not the only way to make money. You can find ways to invest in the market. If you have a little bit of savings, you can get a plan. Uh, it's called passive income generation. Another thing that you could do is you like, what, what do I do? I uh, Rupali always contacts me saying, okay, let's let's um, do a webinar. I say, okay, uh, it's knowledge sharing. I, I don't take any money for it. However, I record these webinars and I put it on my YouTube channel. Then I send these videos to people in my network. So they see what I have to share with them. And then this becomes my personal advertisement as well. So see how I think. There's nothing wrong with advertising your services. There are people who are who are uh, managers in, 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 in the world of finance and they're baking cupcakes and selling now because they have to make money. <laughs> so you see, I job for my job, I will notice my job, I will get my talent very well. It is a very passive approach. You got to lean forward a little bit. No one's going to give you work in the middle of a global pandemic. You're going to have to generate work for yourself. There was this guy I knew, uh, who used to be in charge of some of the biggest restaurants in Mumbai, part of one of these huge chains. And because all the restaurants are shut, he had no income. Do you know what he started doing? He started making homemade momos and selling them to people. And khud ja ke apne bike pe, he goes and delivers to people all over Mumbai, mask pen ke. And he's getting lots of orders now. And he and I also help spread the word. So people are doing all kinds of things from their house, cake, momos, all kinds of things. You can become a, you can you can uh, run an online course. You can get into the food industry. Uh, you can uh, you know get into some kind of um, some kind of service provision. Uh, your expertise is is very much required. Private tutorials and tuitions is a way to make extra money if you know a certain subject really well. So just sitting around and waiting for someone to give you a job is something that I would suggest you don't do because you're unlikely to get a job in the middle of a global pandemic. Unlikely. You know, when I graduated from, I did my MBA and I got out in 2009, uh, there were no jobs because of that global recession was taking place. You know, the debt bubble that burst in the United States, that was the problem at that time. So no one was hiring. So I remember every day I used to, it was one of there was no WhatsApp. There was no Blackberry also. So I had this Nokia phone. I remember N73 I used to have. And I used to make phone calls literally starting at 11 in the morning all the way up till 4 in the, to, or 5 in the afternoon because calling people saying, is there any job, is there any lead? And I used to get so frustrated. Finally, I did that for two months and finally one of my friends uh, gave me uh, a lead and I got a job. So getting a job is not so easy, you know. Also, another good way to get noticed is uh, really have a good... Uh, presence on LinkedIn. So what happens on LinkedIn is if you write articles on using Medium or using LinkedIn on your area of expertise or you share videos of your talks or if you share uh, photos of events that you're a part of, uh, it's a very good way to create, it's a very soft brand building exercise. So you see, people will notice that you are available and in the market if you are on such websites like Instagram, LinkedIn, Facebook, you've got to be aggressive out there to reach out to people. And you need to start uh, also marketing your services on using WhatsApp. This is something that is becoming more and more popular. And a lot of people, you know, they uh, don't take this, this stuff seriously. Like, uh, for example, if someone I don't know sends me a LinkedIn request, a lot of them don't even have a profile picture on their LinkedIn profile. So I reject those requests. Why the hell should I accept any LinkedIn request from someone who doesn't even have, a, who's so lazy that they didn't even want to put a profile picture? But why are you, are you joking? Really? Is that how seriously you take your public image? Because you see, people are making impressions about you on the internet now. No one has the time to come and meet you face to face and shake hands and have coffee with you and then have Mari biscuits with you and then have 
uh, have a nice long chat with you. People are going to Google you. You guys, if you think what I'm talking is absolute rubbish, you're going to forget about me. Kaun yaare, Dr. Raman. Or if you like what I said, like for example, this is my third collaboration with Rupali. Obviously, she feels I make some sense. So that's why she keeps calling me back. Anyone who's on this webinar will Google me at some point. If you Google me, you'll reach my website. You'll reach my company website. You'll find my Instagram profile. You'll find my YouTube channel. You'll find my Facebook page. You'll find everything except my bloody horoscope on the internet about me. And I have nothing to hide. I have nothing to hide. So I have made myself very easily uh, approachable. I've made myself very easy to find. So get yourself registered as a Google business, etc. Also ask your clients if you have a, a home business also to start giving you ratings on uh, on Google. All these things are doable and free. Yaar. It's not 1998, you know. I'm waiting for a job. This is a very passive, very passive way to live life. We waiting for Christmas to come, waiting for a job. I remember when I was uh, having some difficult times in my life. And I used to never find friends to uh, travel with. Somehow our schedules were not matching or somehow our budgets were not matching or our timings were not matching. So I said to hell with this, yaar. I want to travel and see as many countries as possible, as much as my money can stretch me. So I was living in Singapore. I just started traveling alone. I said, to kya hoga? First time I went to Cambodia, I was feeling so weird on that flight. I still remember saying, yaar, tere to koi dosti nahi hai, to akele, akele ja raha hai. And I went to Cambodia and made so many friends from countries I didn't even know existed on this planet. I didn't know where Croatia is at that point. I didn't know where Czechoslovakia is. I don't know where countries are. But I made so many connections, so many friends. I had such a lovely experience. Then I realized that, yeah, I should do it So what is the model of the story? The model of the story is very simple. Please take control. Okay? So I hope that answers your question. Yes. yes. There, there is a next, next question, question from Sushant, sir. It's okay on the paper that do the work of first priority. Actually, at a workplace, a lot of many works are there. Then how to make it? And that too with the keeping the balance. I have not understood the question. What does it basically mean? What do you, what do you mean? How do you get work done? It is uh, he's asking for the, how to keep a balance between your work and personal life. You have to organize yourself and understand everyone has a different working style like for me i'm a bit of a marathon man like i will sit and do a lot of work in one chunk and then i will not think about work or do any work for a while some people prefer a more staggered approach so they'll do work for one hour then they'll take a 45 minute break then work for another half an hour then take another break for me if i really love what I'm doing or I know I really need to finish this, I'll go in for full marathon. I'll sit with one black coffee and I'll say, Apne ko aaj ghanta, ghanta ka hai. Kuch bhi karo. If it gets too much, my back starts hurting, my butt starts hurting, I'll get up, go stretch my legs, listen to some music or watch an episode of uh, some sitcom on my uh, iPad and I'm done. So see, your office has certain expectations of you. But all those expectations may not be realistic. All those expectations may not even be doable. So for you, the challenge is you need to set a very even tone with people in your office. Because, you know, if you notice, all offices have people. Some people always have, you always see them working. And some end up having more coffee and doing very little work. It's because you have set a reputation, you have set a tone. If you're always scared of your boss, you're always, ha ha, ho jayega, aap tension mat lo, mein kar dunga. Aisa karunga, ki aap marte dam tak yaad rakhoge, ki aisa bhi kaam koi kar sakta hai. If you be become that person, ek dam begging, ek dam, oh ho ho, ore bapre, kaam hai. You become that person, then that is going to be the reputation that you... Uh, establish in the company and then that's not very good is it because then if you say no it is seen as you being insubordinate it's it's seen as you being uh, you know disinterested or incapable at the task or not showing uh, proactiveness or not having leadership qualities or not having a can-do attitude but the fact is a lot of our uh, a lot of people in organizations have really ridiculous and unreasonable expectations of us so learn to say no learn to say no and uh, learn to say no quick before you burn out okay and it's very common 
especially people at the junior levels are usually abused i remember when i was working in the tv industry many 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 years ago in utv i used to work 17 18 hours a day and i didn't know how to say no so my boss deliberately had uh, given me tasks that didn't even require my presence but i'm waiting till 3 4 5 in the morning sleeping in the office sleeping in my car i was abused and uh, I had started losing weight, my eyes, had, I started developing dark circles, I used to look sick. And everyone knew that I was being abused, but no one did anything. And that's usually how it is in the corporate world. No one owes you, as I said, your wellness. To a point where I completely cracked. And I remember once I was crying sitting in my car. I was very young, I was 23, uh, maybe 22. This is uh, 11 years ago. I'm 34 now. I was crying and I just called up a friend. I said, yeah, I need to get out of here. But I'm not going to quit this job till I have another job in my hand. So then I became very aggressive about looking for work. And the next place I went to was okay. It wasn't the best. But then I kept jumping. I kept finding uh, places that uh, appreciate my attitude or my style of work. And I also became better at saying no. Like if if sometimes people say, hey, it's very urgent, you know, you can do it quickly, you have to you have to say, sorry, I, I have already my plate is full and I'm not going to take this on. Please give it to someone else. You have to learn to be assertive. If you become aggressive, if you become, hey, you only find me, I will get it, 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 I will get it. If you become dramatic, then people will uh, start getting upset with how could you get dramatic. I was asking for work, I didn't ask you for a bloody kidney. You know what I mean? So, uh, it's about creating that uh, tone, which is very, very serious. And no one will uh, bullshit you or take you for a ride. But at the same time, uh, people know that you're a competent employee. People know that you are not someone who's just being lazy or negligent or rebellious for the hell of it. Hena. So it's really about creating that, uh, creating, creating that reputation. And it's so from the first day to the last day, wherever you work, be very wary of your reputation. So you know, don't talk about your personal life at office too much. I remember, but I'm my wife ne kya bola kal raat ko. Who cares, yeah? Why are you giving unnecessary information to your colleagues? No one cares what your wife said to you. No one cares whether you had uh, idlis or whether you had upma for breakfast. So I'm not saying don't have human connections with people in the office. I'm saying keep your mouth shut and don't give information that is of no use to them. It's always good to be slightly mysterious at the workplace so that you aren't like an open book. People know everything about you, right? From your favorite color to whether uh, you know, you're a Shah Rukh Khan or a Salman fan. And nowadays, people will find out about you on social media. So I always used to have this rule. I used to not add my colleagues on social media unless I have worked with them for at least six months. Okay. So, it's six months. Who is, who is. Because in uh, big companies, mein also there are some alliances. This is lunch ka group, this is a project ka group. Hai. So you have to understand the alliances. You have to understand who is in the boss's back pocket. What is the temperament of the boss? What are his expectations? Does he want chumchas or does he want capable employees or sometimes the boss is also very incompetent and he needs people to clean up his mess so you have to understand these dynamics before you create a reputation so be mysterious be pleasant but don't be in a hurry to create some kind of great reputation uh, instantly because that may make you look clingy and needy and someone who's just trying too much you know so that is something I would I would I would implore you to think about so there is another question from the Jay sir. He is asking, could you please mention any specific strategy to expose our knowledge in the right way and because of most of the things we learn from the negative attitudes? Expo so you can, can you suggest any you can express, strategy? You, yeah, so if you want to show people how much you know, uh, one good strategy is to go and ask for work. Uh, from someone who you know is very influential. So you say, hey, I would like to contribute. Can you please give uh, give me an opportunity to try try my hand at this? Uh, but you see how I said it? Sir, you give me this work and see how I You know, of course, I'm overacting a little bit. Why? To drive home the message. You have to be very calm. You have to be very cool. If you give it, it's okay. If you so you have to be sound very confident of yourself and say, just give me a chance. Just let me do this. You know, I used to see these movies when I was growing up where, you know, the police officer gets taken off the case 
एंड देन गोस टू द कमिश्नर एंड से आप मुझे 24 घंटे दो मैं आपको आई एम वेयरिंग द पुलिस वर्दी कलर्स खाकी कलर्स आप मुझे 24 घंटे दो मैं आपको करके दिखाऊंगा दिस ऑल फिल्मी थिंग्स बट इफ यू आर वेरी पुशी यू कम अक्रॉस एज अग्रेसिव इफ यू डोंट गो एंड आस्क फॉर वर्क पीपल मे से कि यार इसको ही डजेंट हैव वट वॉट दे कॉल अ फ्रंट रनर्स एटीट्यूड you're one of those people who sort of sits in the who hides under the anonymity of you know their little cubicles so yes you have to ask for work also to show that you have knowledge uh, another good way to show that you have knowledge is to become a very strong uh, thought leader what does a thought leader uh, accomplish so as i said uh, for example if there is something like for example if there's something you're very very good at uh write about it blog about it make videos about it post about it on your instagram so that people from your company who are curious about you discover that are isko to bahut malum hai are isko to matlab knowledge hai shayad humne office mein we have underutilized him don't forget your boss is also stalking your social media uh, at some level right so if you're going to keep posting only photos of how cute your cat is or you're going to keep posting photos about last year hum pata hai hum ableshwar gaye the then that's not the best use of social media you have to also post uh, from time to time about your achievements about your credentials not saying post your cv on linkedin or, or post your cv on instagram but unko ek jhalak dekhni chahiye that wow we are really getting uh, a very limited exposure to this person's capability so ask for work put your work and your knowledge and your expertise on the internet so that you are discoverable i don't understand why people are so scared of starting youtube channels okay you may not make any money from it okay you'll have what 100 subscribers of those 100 28 will be your cousins <laughs> and the rest will be people from your school group it's okay it's fine it's an archival don't forget videos even with bloody 10 views get they if someone looks for you with types your name on google looking for you wo video aa jata hai malum hai in the views are not uh, uh, crucial to that so it's about being extremely easy to find on the internet and when you are found it should you should be very easy to reach so be very uh, be very accessible over email over whatsapp phone calls as well so that's something i pride myself uh, i i'm very proud of that i'm very easy to reach people don't have to struggle for many days or many hours to reach me usually if they whatsapp me they'll get a reply within one or two hours if they send me an email they'll get um reply within the day usually i'll reply within the day unless i'm really uh, stretched uh, so really it's about creating that um, visibility but also creating uh, a dent at the office uh, by networking even within the office you have to talk to people don't just be a very quiet presence who comes and says ji sir ji sir and you know goes away right you have to be noticeable so h- how you dress how you speak uh, who you hang out with in the office is also very important sometimes if you hang around with people who are always cribbing about the boss about the department about the work then you pick up on that energy and then just cause you're seen with them uh you might also be seen as a reo us gang ka hissa who keeps complaining it's part of that little clique that is always disappointed in are pata hai kal bhi hum log 8 baje tak kaam kar rahe the you're part of that gang who's only talking about lunch mein kya order karna hai kahan jana hai so you understand so your company will the company you keep in your company will follow you uh, around in terms of the reputation you gana all right i hope that answers your question yes, yes. yes. there is yes. another question yes. from reno uh, that he is asking you for can you suggest how to improve our work life balance after pandemic period oh what a challenging challenging question so i mean <laughs> definitely some adjustment is going to be required uh but i think what's going to happen after the pandemic period cannot be fully predicted uh, yet but one thing that you can do is uh keep your keep your as i said keep your personal emotions and keep your uh personal reservations uh completely uh, uh you know completely invisible to people who surround you in the workplace become difficult to read as a person it's a very useful skill you know you shouldn't be people shouldn't be able to read you as well uh, so they should always keep wondering about you ki iska humko abhi tak samajh mein nahi aaya काम तो आता है इसको 
so people are going to be extremely curious about how you dealt with the pandemic so there're going to be a lot of conversations about a uh, lot of convers so oh, someone's unmuted lots of conversations about uh, how did you deal with it tumhare building mein bhaji mila kya tumhare building mein kitne cases the how did you manage were you alone anyone you know has died of the virus so you know you might become part of the little bit that grape wine so after the pandemic my suggestion is don't discuss the pandemic at the workplace show that you are ready to move beyond it show that you are ready to grow beyond it uh, i think it's a very very valuable uh, a very very valuable thing to be able to create an emotional distance from the task uh, because sometimes the task requires you to really focus and not get all uh, emotional about it so that is a suggestion to you uh, don't get into that post pandemic uh, charcha are modi ne pata hai se bhashan deta actually pata nahi wo pm cares ka paisa kidhar gaya don't get into that don't get into that you're there for a task so do the bloody task and go home to the people who matter you know what i mean so it's about it's a, it's about again public perceptions are very important at the workplace Okay, because people are going to use that information okay. against you. They're going to use it to judge you. They're going to use it to give you a, 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 a some kind of label which will follow you around for a very long time. Do you understand? And that will uh, affect the trajectory of your career. So, yeah. Thank you, sir. There is another question from Devki Ma'am. Uh, she is asking for uh, regarding the kids, how to help them to get a read of your pressure. how to get, help children get rid of peer pressure is it so yes it was another question get rid of. so usually uh, peer pressure uh, acts upon all teenagers but uh, one very unfortunate thing that happens in india is that a lot of families don't uh, support their teenagers during uh, what should be a very which is actually a very difficult period in their life you know biologically they are changing psychologically they are changing hormonally they are changing socially so many more expectations sexuality and sexual desires is changing and parents autopilot pe uh, kafi sari cheeze karte hain which is not fair you know because i have noticed parents get very anxious about their teenagers ki koi stupid cheez kar lega koi stupidity ho jayegi he'll get drunk or he'll do drugs or he'll uh, get into wrong company or will have a boyfriend or a girlfriend or whatever you know so a lot of people don't trust their own upbringing of their kids and that's less a reflection on the kids and more a reflection on your incompetence if that is the question isn't it so a home should feel like a safe place so really it's about creating a relationship with your children where they are not afraid to talk about anything with you your children should not be afraid of your judgments of them if a boy has a girlfriend he should f- be the first person he should go and celebrate that with is his family even if that girl ends up not becoming his wife i mean it's 2020 guys so be okay with it support them don't punish them the more they feel like they can trust you the more you will feel like you can trust them it's really a two way process you can't demand them to trust you just because you're the parent so why is peer pressure affecting them so much it's because they don't they're looking for a support system outside their homes that support comes to them in the form of their peers if they had a good strong uh, uh presence of a very strong parent figure and they were not constantly worried about uh, how likable they are in the eyes of strangers as long as they knew that my home turf is strong i'm loved here i'm respected here i'm treated here with kindness my dreams are respected my voice is respected my opinion is respected my gender is uh, respected not that tu beti hai tu to paraye ghar mein jayegi tere ko humne padhaya aur tu kya boyfriend boyfriend ghuma rahi hai you know that kind of stuff can kill a relationship it can ruin a relationship in a family it's not you people very proudly say oh i never had a boyfriend when i was in college i have a girlfriend so bhai to kya apne kya matlab ukhad liya usse you haven't really lived life then is it it's such a normal thing to like people of the opposite sex or even of the same sex lgbtq it's okay this is modern society 
we have to be more accepting in the houses so they don't feel the need to maybe get uh, with the wrong company because understand your child's moral compass your child's understanding of the world hasn't developed overnight a lot of it has developed from observing you and how you are with the neighbors with the extended family a lot of that has developed uh, not just observing you but also based on what you have fed them so being a parent is an extremely responsible role okay so if your kids are making wrong decisions ask yourselves how many wrong decisions you may have made with these kids so that they are now lost because they cannot find their way home because when they come home they are punished they are judged they are labeled they are abused they are abandoned they are rejected and they are treated like shit tu chhota hai tu chhota hi reh are insaan hai dil hai uska to dil rakho uska give him some time give him some respect give him a platform to be different you know your children don't have to be clones of you isn't it peer pressure is going to hit them it hit me also all kinds of things will hit you peer pressure but i always had a very strong robust support system in my parents so i was always able to cross check whether i'm on the right path right for me based on my goals and then as i grew up i was able to create my own values and in some areas i may not agree with my father or mother even now but that's normal that's healthy that's how humanity evolves new concepts new generations come to surface so that's what i yes, yes sir there is another question from he is asking for how to handle toxic colleagues of the same gender at a workplace ignore 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 them, ignore them, ignore them. them. you can do. You can't get them fired. If you want to involve HR, I think HR is unfortunately the way HR departments are run, and I've worked in enough companies to know HR doesn't have any counseling skills. They are uh, quite effective in processing your pay and processing your holiday leaves, and quite uh, effective in certain. a uh, clerical and administration based roles but just cause they're called human relations don't rely on them to improve your relationships with your colleagues um one solution is for you to uh, you know address the elephant in the room take that colleague out say come let's go have some coffee go starbucks or something obviously now you can't go to starbucks but just take that colleague out and say yaar issue kya hai samasya kya hai masla kya hai problem kya hai what is happening why is this becoming a war because shots have been fired and this is unpleasant a lot of people are very wary of having this talk and it's important to involve if things are getting really really messy you're going to have to involve your leadership to say that there is either one of us uh, gets transferred to another team or one of us uh, calms the hell down or one of us will get tired of the situation and abandon their post and find another company or even sit at home zillat nahi chahiye na kisi ko insult nahi chahiye na pertu it becomes a question of self respect so really it's either you deal with the colleague or you involve the boss now if your boss is a bit of a uh, not so, so good at handling this and is a bit of a scatter brain then you know the 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 relationship i'm saying the leadership the leadership is not going to help you for god's sake don't involve your family they're not going to be able to help they'll just get stressed out you'll involve your parents they'll say to phir chhod do na phir chhod do na chhodne ke baad kahan jaoge so which is why i always tell people you must always have a plan b don't just think like a bank employee government bank employee ki this is my job your assistant manager bank manager death <laughs> that's in your entire life think of uh, i always encourage people that use the corporate landscape to learn the uh, ins and outs of it take the, take back the best practice practices and then some find some way maybe once you're a little braver you have a little money saved a little more experience to be self employed because once you're self employed you can control how much money you make the speed at which it comes in again this may not be for everyone some people say are kisko magaj mari ni chahiye apna pension hai apna tension nahi hai apna salary hai khatam and maybe you don't have any role models but i always feel that flexibility is a and freedom for me are very important 
Yeah, someone is unmuted themselves. You have something to add, or was that was that by mistake? What I, when you unmuted, I heard yeah, much, yeah. I heard but I heard machi hai machi hai. I was like, hey, eh? what the kaha hai? <laughs> We're hearing strange things here. There be bete bete. What's happening? Someone must have unmuted. And uh, no worries. Machi hai machi. Yeah. yeah, we will do that next, next question. question. Next, next question, question is from Shahnaz Ma'am. Do you strictly follow the eight hour of work now? You have mentioned some time back that initially you struggle a lot. But, but uh, like, like you, you mentioned, mentioned stretching, stretching yourself, yourself and braining down yeah, is not a good, good over a long run. run. So, so saying no is important. Is important. Uh, so, so how, how do you manage, manage time, time now? now? Of the day, work-life balance boils down. The time management. Could you please elaborate on how do you manage all the time? See, I'll tell you something. Eight hours of work rule a day is entirely based on your stamina. So if someone may say, Are, should I run five kilometers or seven kilometers to be fit? Or some people may say, should I run or should I do yoga to be fit? Someone may say, should I do more stretches and should I do uh, pranayam or should I do yoga and pranayam and cardio and weight training? So you see, all of these are ways to be fit. So there are several ways in which you can manage your work. So let me go back to your question because it's a slightly long question. Uh, I did struggle a lot because I didn't know how to say no. Uh, but now I'm self-employed, so I, I, I don't have anyone who I have to say yes or no to. I'm my own boss. Uh, being a consultant has its perks that I can decide how much work I take on. But I, I don't get a monthly paycheck at the end of the month. I, I Depending on how much I work, how many clients I have, or how many corporate engagements I have, that uh, informs my bank account and bank book which hopefully is quite nice right now because I, I'm getting more opportunities to talk than I did before because I don't have to go anywhere. I can sit here with this green blue light behind and talk to you lovely people such as yourself. How do I manage time now? Okay, let me give you some very simple tips. I try to not think of time as my enemy. Does that make sense? I don't see time as something I have to manage. The word manage comes with, with like you have to manage something that is out of control. Managing stress, managing the children, managing the schedule. So I don't manage time. I, uh, I, I, I understand time. I understand what is required. So I look at time. I interact with time. I don't manage it. Okay. Uh, I typically make time for uh, listening to music every day. Uh, I would in, uh, encourage all of you all each and every one of y'all to spend a huge amount of money on buying good wireless Bluetooth earphones. This will accomplish two things. One, those two little uh, tokras, they look like mini modaks. <laughs> you can put them in your ears. It's fantastic if your job involves a lot of phone calls because you know what happens? Both these hands are free. So you can clean your kitchen while being on an office call. You can do push-ups while listening to an audio book. You can do so much when you both your hands are free and you're on the call. So I would say that's a very interesting way to sort of kill. So try to find uh, ways in which you can do two things at a time. You want to catch up with your mother, but you also want to exercise. Make sure when you're exercising, you have those Bluetooth earphones in and you speak to your mother at that time. You can say, I'm talking. Uh, to you while I'm exercising, I'm having a long walk. So you see, you can do multiple things. So always think, so for example, uh, I remember my mother used to do this. She was very, my mom's a very, very, very fitness uh, conscious. Uh, she had the stepper, you know, like a, like a little stepper. So when she would watch TV, she used to go on her stepper, up, down, up, down, up, down. I remember so many, so many times my mom on going on her stepper, up and down, watching something on TV. So she'd always kill two birds with one stone. I remember we have a treadmill at my parents' house, so she would be on the treadmill walking, and my mom loves the news. I don't think she watches the news the way people watch Netflix. She loves the news, but she'll always walk while watching the news. So try to see if you can group certain tasks together if you'd like to find a good way to organize your time. Don't say I don't don't use the word I'm managing my time. Say I'm organizing it. Anyone have a question? If you have answers, also give them to me. Maybe I missed out something. All right. 
Okay, and let me tell you something, guys. Like, be very honest with you, man. If if you are losing sleep, if you are being treated like garbage, if people are punishing you, bullying you, ignoring you, and you still want to make it work at that workplace, uh, understand that people are not going to change for your convenience. No one owes you anything. A toxic workplace with a toxic work culture, uh, with a, with with a history of bullying and with a history of turnover, doesn't change overnight because you see leadership is what sets the tone, what sets the mood, and what sets the routine for a certain team. So really, uh, it's important for the leaders to understand this. And understand there are so many different types of leadership as well. Uh, and I'm sure you can just Google types of leadership and you will find autocratic leader, democratic leader, all kinds of leaders, laissez-faire style of working. We used to learn when we were doing management. You have to remember the five types of leaders. But actually, all these are models. Understand that you're dealing with human beings with human habits and human limitations and human problems and human biases and human prejudices. Okay? So look at human beings as uh, flawed and they don't owe you anything. No one owes you anything on this planet. Your mother doesn't owe you love. Your father doesn't owe you money. Your children don't owe you loyalty. Learn to live with this truth. It's very, very cruel, I know, sometimes. When I say these things, people say, Dr. Raman, what are you talking about? It's true, man. Look at how our, uh, jungle, um, our, our, our uh, other species in the jungle live. It's a very, very opportunistic world we live in. If you are naive, if you are not opportunistic, if you are not smart, if you are not well kept, if you're not well informed, you will be obsolete like this. It's very true. We have to find ways to adapt. We have to find ways to wisen up. So many stories we heard, even during the coronavirus, old people. I read something a couple of weeks ago. Some uh, lady or father, I think it was a man, was abandoned by his family in the hospital. Ki lelo, buddha hai, rakhlo. Unko chahiye nahi, corona go. Rakhlo uncle ko hospital me so ugly to abandon your family member at a hospital facility this is the world we live in opportunistic sometimes selfish so don't be naive don't expect things to miraculously change ki koi jadu ki chadi hai jisse mere sare colleagues achhe ho jayenge mera boss sorted ho jayega kuch nahi hota you have to manage the tone, manage the pace, manage the expectations and manage your entry and exit points from a good situation, from a bad situation, from a neutral situation, from any damn situation. It's about you. Take charge of your journey. Stop waiting for Santa Claus or God to solve your problems. He won't. Bhot aaye, bhot gaya aur aapke baad bhi bhot aayenge aur jayenge is dunya mein, is company mein, is organization mein. I remember when I was in 5th standard, there was to be so many articles on Inder Kumar Gujral being the Prime Minister. Who is talking about that today? Nowadays it's all Modi, Modi, Modi. Good. He's doing it, 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 he's doing it. You might be the flavor of the season. You won't always be. You're going to grow old, you're going to die someday. Keep that in your mind. You're not around forever. So don't try to manage time. Interact with time, organize time. Okay, it's your friend. It's there to help you. So you you get to choose what you do with it. Yeah, there is one more question. Sir, what are your favorite books? Oh, I, I really liked this book. Are we allowed to use bad language? Bad language is okay. There's a book called <laughs> the, the Subtle Art of Not Giving a Fuck. Very nice book. Very thin book. Must uh, You should order it. It's a very nice book. I really like because when I read the book, I realized a lot of what he's written in the book is very naturally matches with my personal philosophy as well of life. It's a very nice book. It's the one that I read a few months ago. I actually reread certain parts of it because I really like how simply it has been written. Of course, you can buy my book on Amazon. It's called Essential TA, A Common Sense Psychology. Let me show it to you. Give me a second. Selling my book, selling my book and not ashamed about it buy this on Amazon. I really poured a lot of my heart into this book. Uh, so these are two of the books that I are occurring to me right now. I read a lot of articles from different different uh, places 
so sometimes I don't remember the names of these uh, places. But you can find me, Shenaz. Uh, you can find me online, and uh, I'll just give you my Instagram handle, guys. Uh, I've posted it on chat, so please find me on Instagram, guys. Message me anytime, and I will reply. And also look for me on Google, on LinkedIn. It's on chat, so I'm very easy to find. Instagram and 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 LinkedIn. These are my two favorite platforms. Facebook's a pain in the butt, especially after what's been happening with Zuckerberg and data theft. So yeah, I also love the book *Man's Search for Meaning*. It's a very dark book, but it's a very very useful book. I love *Who Moved My Cheese*. I love *The Alchemist* by Paulo Coelho. It's a very lovely book. And what else? I've I've, I've been uh, uh, read. There's a lot of books on creative thinking that I usually uh, like to read, but I can't remember the names because there's so many, and I read chapters and then I read multiple things at the same time. So I'm sorry, it's not coming back to me. But you can ask me another time. You know how to find me. You know how to find me now. Okay, go on Instagram. Go like my Instagram profile. You can DM me there or message me on LinkedIn. Yeah, I'll also uh, send. I'll also put my email address. Uh, for you to, if you want to write to me, so that's my email address. Yes. Yeah. Anyone have questions? Question? Please, Please ask. ask. Otherwise, uh, we will wind up the session. No silly questions, no silly questions about whether I have devil's ears. I've been asked that many, many times. I never knew it would look like this. I look like a pixie or some kind of devil. I know what to do, but that's just the pillow out here behind me. Okay, so. Kerunissa is asking, Kerunissa, can you contact me for consulting? Yeah, of course, of course. But uh, be advised that uh, the consulting is chargeable. Uh, so definitely we can uh, you can you can speak to me but obviously my consulting charges will apply and that can be discussed later in uh -huh. via DM so yeah consulting is uh, definitely uh, open I see it all my clients through Skype or WhatsApp calls or uh, you know all these video conferencing platforms are there I use Skype because I really like Skype I've always loved Skype so of course you can consult consult me because I'll uh, I'll put my WhatsApp number also. Uh, you can WhatsApp me if yeah, you want yeah. a consultation with me, or if you want to do a collab, Insta Live, anything you want to do, just reach out to me. Please just don't send me chain forwards or good morning or you send this Ganesha to eight people and you'll have a lot of luck. Please don't send me that. That stuff drives me mad. Okay, <laughs> have some mercy <laughs> on me. I live alone, you know. So <laughs> just don't ever send me forwards of that nature. But you can text me anytime. I'll reply whenever I can. So do you have my WhatsApp? You have my Instagram. Let me retype my Instagram. Um, we also do counseling courses at the Heart to Heart Counseling Center, which I represent. Uh, and uh, these are doing really well. We have a lot of uh, different training programs. So you can go and check out about my company. Uh, I'm putting the uh, website address here. It's called hearttoheartindia.com. Um, we do uh, workshops as well. Like uh, There's a workshop called Creative Writing for Self-Healing. So people who are dealing with a lot of difficult things in their life and they want to really get rid of all those heavy emotions that are weighing them down. We have these workshops that are on offer. Everything is going on e-learning. So I'll share two numbers. You can screenshot. Uh, this is for workshops. This is for contacting Dr. Aman. So you have both numbers. Okay. And I hope to see you guys online, on LinkedIn, on Instagram. Yeah, that's about it from me. Yeah, thank, thank you so much. Yes, I'm going to Yeah, anyone would like to give feedback that you're not or any other things, they can share with you. Or maybe you can come to me. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yes, ma'am. Sure, sure, sure. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Dr. Aman, sir. It was a very wonderful session. We enjoyed a lot. And I hope all participants uh, enjoyed this session. This session. And it gives uh, so many things to us. I, it was a uh, treat for us. On Sunday, it was a special treat for us. Thank you so much for uh, joining with us.
and on the behalf of knowledge edge i would like to thank you all participate and a doctor amazon thank you thank you team of knowledge edge